this is Bill Goodwin, inviting all you servicemen and women to enjoy another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our tenor Jimmy Cash, and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, the Burnses have just arrived in Boston to entertain at the United War Fund rally tomorrow night. And we find them now in their hotel room. Well, you know, George, there's one thing about that rally tomorrow night that puzzles me. What's that? Why did they ask you to sing? After all, you're one of the greatest singers in this country. Oh, Gracie. Well, you are. I know, but you shouldn't say it. <laughs> Besides, they probably asked some Boston fellow to sing tomorrow night. Some back bay singer. But you're, you'd be twice as good. You not only have a back bay, but a front bay. <laughs> well, if they don't want me to sing, it's their loss. Well, it's just a shame. Well, if you sang here, you could put Boston on the map. <laughs> you, you mind make this town as famous as Worcester? Well, they didn't ask me. Mm, foolish, foolish people. George, open up that flute like throat and give Mama a load of what Boston is missing. <clears throat> no one to talk at all by myself. No one to walk with. I'm happy on the show. Oh, George, when you sing like that, my bobby socks just go limp. <laughs> hey, Miss Behaven, saving all my love for. Oh, baby, love for you. Really saving love for you. Oh, Boston, Boston, you're committing musical suicide. Why, George, you've got more music in your little finger than, than Rudy Valley has in his entire nose. Well, I am in a good voice tonight. I know for certain you're the one. I love. Oh, hold it, George, hold it. Look, hand me the telephone. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to call Arthur Fiedler. He's in charge of music tomorrow night. Uh, hello? Hello, operator? Get me Mr. Arthur Fiedler, director of Boston Pops Orchestra. Yes, I'll hold on. Oh, you've just got to sing tomorrow night, George. We owe it to the city that gave us Paul Revere and Samuel Adams. Hmm. I'm surprised you know so much about Boston history. Well, you might not expect me to know about Paul Revere, but everyone knows who invented the Adams hat. I thought so. You, uh, hello? Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Vila. This is Gracie Allen. Uh, Mr. Vila, uh, do you know I ain't misbehaving? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Fiedler. <laughs> now, what did he say? He said to call him if I got in the mood. I said. <laughs> no, Mr. Fiedler, I meant, do you have an arrangement of it uh, that my husband, George Burns, could sing off? Yeah? yeah? Oh, oh, all right. Uh, George, he wants to hear your voice. Oh, give me the phone. Okay, Mr. Fiedler. Just get a load of this. Like Jackie Horner in the corner, don't go nowhere, and I don't care. Your kisses worthwhile waiting for, oh, daddy, daddy, daddy. Yeah, well, well, Mr. Beadler, how did you like it? Hello? 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 Well, don't you worry, dear. Boston will hear you sing if I have to start... Come in. Oh, hi, folks. Oh, well, hello, Bill. Oh, good heavens, someone must be choking that poor man. Gracie, don't, don't you know who that is in the next room? Who? But it's James Melton. Uh, that, that's a trained voice. Well, he ought to be calling trains with it. <laughs> Why, Gracie, he's giving a concert here in Boston tonight. Oh, oh, he can sing in Boston, but George can't. How do you like that? Boston and I like it fine. Well, we'll see about that. Excuse me, boys. Oh, Mr. Melton will just have to turn his concert over to George tonight. That's all there is to it. Yes? Uh, you're James Melton, aren't you? Yes, I am. Nelson, I'm Gracie Allen, and I have something very serious to say to you. Yes, I, I knew you were Gracie Allen. I'd know that beautiful face anywhere. Well, you've just simply got to... You would? <laughs> sure. And every time I see you, you look younger. Oh, Mr. Nelson. Younger and more charming. Oh, James. And, 
and more chic. Oh, Jimmy. But enough of this. I believe you had something to say. Oh, well, never mind that. Let's have some more of this. No. <laughs> no, really, Gracie, what did you want to say to me? Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> well it's kind of hard to say now. Well, uh, to be fair, I really should hear you sing first. Well, I'll be glad to. How about some traviata? Oh, no, thanks. I just finished dinner. <laughs> but you go right ahead and sing something. All right. Here's something you might like. Let me, I hear a haunting melody And I surrender to the tender thrill It brings a holiday for spring Sweet music all around me Softly as the song begins I hear a host of violins And it can only be my lonely heart That sings a holiday for spring Because your love has found me Let me, I hear a haunting melody And I surrender to the tender thrill It brings a holiday for spring Sweet music all around me When you're gone it fades away But when we meet I hear it play As from above a song of love comes sweet and clear Whenever you are near The angels play a holiday for spring I came in here to ask you to let my husband, George, to sing at your concert tonight, but now that I've heard your voice, I... Well, I can't ask it. <laughs> it's too ridiculous. Really? Oh, yes. If they ever hear my husband sing, you're finished. You mean George would take over my career? Well, it's inevitable. Uh, what do you do besides sing at the Metropolitan and give concerts? But never mind. I, I'm sort of interested in this husband of yours. I've just got to hear that man sing. Well, you'll hate yourself. He's glorious, simply glorious. Really a lot better than I am, huh? <laughs> um, how high can you sing, Mr. Melton? Well, I can hit high C. Yeah, and how low? Low A. Mm -hmm. Well, there you are, A to C, two notes. Now, wait a minute. There are two octaves in there. Oh, never mind the alibis. Now, George can hit an I below low Q. And I below low Q? Yes. Well, there are no such notes. Oh, I suppose Paul Whiteman doesn't know music. Whiteman? Mr. Whiteman said that George had the lowest IQ in music. <laughs> My Jackie Holder in the corner don't go nowhere and I don't care. Where's that coming from? Well, my room. Do you like it? Oh, yes. I love them all. What kind is it? A cocker spaniel? <laughs> Well, that's my husband, George Burns. Oh. Oh, Cocker Spaniel. Well, a Cocker Spaniel has long ears and droopy eyes and, and wrinkles and... Well, anyway, he doesn't sound like one. I'm sorry, Gracie. I guess the wall kind of muffled it. Well, I'll go get him and bring him in here. Hey, excuse me a moment, Mr. Melvin. Well, Gracie, did you ask Melton about me singing at his concert? Oh, George, I, I just didn't have the heart. Poor Mr. Melvin. If the people hear you sing, you'll be all finished. Well, that's show business. A man is a big star one day, and then some young kid like me comes along, and he's finished. Dear, let's keep this discussion sensible, shall we? Well, what are we going to do? Oh, wait, I've got it. What? 
You and James Melton change places. You take over his singing career, and he'll work with me. You mean you'd create a new radio team? James Melton and Gracie Allen? Gracie Allen and James Melton, dear. <laughs> this time I wouldn't be such a big fool. Well, I would like to have my own singing program like Melton's and give concerts and stuff. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try it for a week or so. Oh, good. Let's go see what Mr. Melton thinks of the idea. Well, here we are, Mr. Melton. Uh, this is my charming and talented husband, George Burns. How do you do, Mr. Melton? This is a great pleasure, Mr. Burns. Your wife tells me that you're just about the finest singer in the world. Oh, Gracie likes to exaggerate. There are dozens of singers better than I am. Your name one. Well, I can't think of anybody offhand. Well, how about... Never mind, I'll think of my own. Well, anyway, Mr. Melton, we have a proposition for you. You and George will change places. He'll sing on your program, and you'll work with me. Well, Gracie, I'm very flattered. Gee, I'd, I'd get a big kick out of working with you. But how can you break up the team of Burns and Allen? Why, they go together like ham and eggs. Oh, well, I, I don't intend to disturb the eggs. I just wanted to rearrange the ham. How about it, Jimmy? Well, I don't know. I'd like to ask a few questions. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Well, let me answer them, George. Um, fire away, Mr. Nelson. Well, first of all, what happens to the money you two make? How is it divided? Uh, take it, George. <laughs> well, you'd come out pretty well on that deal, Jimmy. Uh, any other questions? Yes, just one. Exactly what does George do? Take it, George. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. How about it, Jimmy? Are you interested? Yes, I am in a way. But before I turn my singing career over to you... Well, I'd, I'd like to hear your voice. Oh, that's right. You haven't heard George sing. Oh, he's magnificent. His voice melts people down like a red-hot smelter. Oh, Gracie. Why, when he sang at the canteen the other night, he smelled of the entire place. <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear him. Well, unleash those twin nightingales in your throat, dear, and start melting, melting. <laughs> I don't stay out late, don't care to go. I'm home about eight, just me and my radio. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. I've heard enough. Oh, you're convinced, huh? Well, let's just say that I've heard enough. <laughs> Mr. Burns, I don't claim to be an authority, but your technique is wrong. You're, you, you're not using your diaphragm. I'm not? No. No, you should practice breathing. Well, now, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. He's been breathing all his life. Why should he practice? No, but he's not singing properly. He's just using his throat. Well, what do you sing with, your elbow? Well, I, I sing with my diaphragm and my stomach. And then the notes come out nice and round. Well, how can they miss from that stomach? Grace. <laughs> Well, I can't help it, George. You know, I don't like these displays of professional jealousy. Well, he's trying to help me. He may not, he may not have my natural talent, but he has studied. Jimmy, how about a little demonstration? All right, George. I'll be glad to give it to you. Thank you. 
day and nights are lonely. with one tonsil tied behind you. Well, that's not a bad little voice Jimmy has got. In fact, I was about to invite him to share the concert with me tonight. Well, that's very big of you, dear. Mr. Melton isn't George Big. Well, he's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. <laughs> Imagine giving me part of my own concert. Mm, generous, huh? Look, this has gone far enough, folks. I'm doing the concert tonight alone. Alone? Alone. Can't George have half? No. Two songs? No. One song? No. The chorus? No. Can he sell popcorn? All right, all right. <laughs> That's enough, dear. No, it isn't. Boston will hear you sing if I have to appeal directly to Governor Saltonstall. <laughs> Hey, that's an idea. Where's your telephone, Mr. Melton? Right in that room. But surely you will... Oh, leave everything to me. Goodbye, George. You don't suppose she'll actually call the governor? Come in. Well, Bill Goodwin. Come on in. Well, Jim, I... Oh, I just wanted to get... Hello, George. Hello, Bill. Uh, Jimmy, I wanted to ask you for a couple of tickets to your concert tonight. I've got a date with a Boston girl here. Could you spare a couple of balcony seats? Oh, you don't want to sit in the balcony, Bill. Put her up on the front row so she can see how I work. Well, yeah, but in the balcony she can see how I work. <laughs> how about it? Well, Bill, I'll give you the tickets if you get George Burns out of my hair. He insists on appearing at my concert here tonight. Well, what's the matter with that? Thanks, Bill. Listen, Jim, you'd like to create a sensation tonight, wouldn't you? Sure. You'd like to hold that audience spellbound, wouldn't you? Why, of course. Well, then let George get up there. Bill, you're not going to talk at my concert, and George isn't going to sing. Now, come on, and I'll get you those tickets. Well, okay. So long, George. I did what I could for you, pal. Yeah, thanks, pal. I'll be back in about ten minutes, George. Hmm. I wonder if Gracie really telephoned Governor Sorkenstall. I'd better see... <laughs> oh, Governor Saltonstall, are you just saying that? <laughs> oh, Governor. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm not the prettiest girl in the world. No. Oh, Governor Saltonstall, please. Gracie, 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 you're not talking to the governor. You're holding the hook down. I know, dear. I was just rehearsing what I'd say when I did talk to him. <laughs> Well, just forget the whole thing. I'm not going to sing tonight or any other time. I'm through. I may as well give up. Give up? I see. I'll never sing again as long as I live. But that's so unfair to the public. A George Burns who doesn't sing is like a pin-up picture of Betty Grable that shows only her forehead. I'm going into our room and lie down. Oh, poor George. Oh, Mr. Melton just got to let him sing tonight or he'll do something desperate. Why, he's liable to go into our room and close the door and turn on the gas and fix himself a strong cup of coffee. Come in. Is this Mr. Melton's room? Yes. Well, here's his music for tonight's concert. Be sure he gets it. He can't do the concert without this. Yeah. Oh, he can't. No, he'll be lost without this music. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> you, you'll give it to Mr. Melton, won't you? Oh, yes, yeah, I'll give it to him. <laughs> but good. I'm, I'm glad you're still here. Did a man bring my music for tonight's concert? Yes, he did. Good. Where is it? Um, are you going to let George sing? No. Where's my music? Oh, funny. I've lost my memory. What? Well, it happens to me every time I come here to Chicago. But we're in Boston. Oh, are we, Mr. Sinatra? <laughs> now, now, Gracie, I can't do the concert without the music. Come on, where'd you put it? 
Well, oh, wait, my, my memory's coming back. Good. Will you let George sing? No. Whoops, there it goes again. Oh, now, now, really, Gracie. Who? Gracie, that's your name. Then why does everybody call me Snowflake? <laughs> all right, all right, I give up. You've got me over a barrel. Give me the music, and George can sing to me. Oh, thank you, Mr. Melton. You know, for a minute, I thought I'd have to resort to trickery. <laughs> well, goodbye. We'll see you at the concert. <laughs> Gentlemen of Boston, you've been listening to Mr. Nelson sing for two hours. And now we come to the musical portion of his concert. <laughs> A song by the California Thrush, Crosby's Curse, Sugar Throat Burn. <laughs> oh, by the way, George. The orchestra didn't have an arrangement of Ain't Misbehaving, so I'll back you up with a little obligato. Well, it's swell of you to play second fiddle to me this way, Jimmy. Oh, I'm glad to do it, George. Glad to do it. Go talk with all by myself. He's by himself. He's all alone. He's not with you. He's not with me. He's all alone. He's by himself. He's by himself. He's all alone. Figaro, 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 Figaro. That's an obligato? Uh, oh, excuse me, George. I, I sort of got carried away. But not far enough. Go right ahead. Go right ahead and sing. No one to talk with all by myself. No one to walk with. I'm happy on the shelf. Hey. That man is happy. He's the happiest man. Come on, Gracie, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs>